Hey y'all, how's it going? Today's video is covering scales. Yeah, that's right, scales. More importantly, the types of scales that you can use in a drawing. There's different types of scales for different looks. There's long pointy scales, short nubby scales, even sort of bubbly looking scales that you can use to give your characters a different type of look. And today we'll be covering some of those in this video. I hope you enjoy. Now a quick shout out to people who are questioning about horns. This is not a video about horns, although there are horns in this video. I can make that video later, but this is not that video. This is about scales. If you would like me to do a video about how to draw horns, let me know in the comments below. As an added note, I do use the same effect for a lot of these uh, scale techniques as as leaves and also chainmail and other other layered little looks um, to give it texture and stuff that you can use it for things like cobblestones um, with a varied size stones that are on cobblestone streets that you've seen in some uh, old towns and in, in in movies and cartoons and illustrations about cobblestone streets and it it lends itself to a lot of different techniques besides just scales especially the more rounded versions but uh, scales are definitely definitely a uh, a technique that you can use for lots of different things and not just for lizards and dragons and things like that now today's drawing is going to be a little bit less common i guess it's going to be a lizard man not a lizard not a dinosaur not a dragon but a lizard man well the bust of one anyway um not the whole body just mind you but just from the shoulders up um to give a closer look on, on how I would do scale work on a fictional fantasy character such as a lizard person. Now as you can see I am using some pencil to do some shading right now. That's more to give myself an idea of what I want to shade with pen later. I will also be adding some pencil graphite uh, gray tone to my piece at the end to add a little bit more of a gradient in the shading. but. It all works together in the end to make a, a really nice piece, I think. And I hope you like it too. These type of scales are sharp pointy scales which are typically used for things like dragons and menacing creatures and, and your generic dragon demon scales as it were. Pointy, long, serrated almost. Different techniques you can use to make them look like saw blades or different things. These particular ones are just your pointy scales for lack of a better word and uh, they're effective. Now I've moved on to the rounder scales and the, the shorter scales for a smaller scale detail. And, and you can see I'm using one of my just Sharpie fine liners. It's, it's no big deal to what sort of pencils you use or what sort of pins you use for the detail. Or as long as it puts ink down and it doesn't smudge so much. But um, these scales are just your short scales, but 
you know, you can do scales at any length, you know, so if you do them too long, they start to look like feathers, and that's a different technique altogether. I mean, it it, it definitely, uh, it's the same technique only longer, but it gives definitely a different look if you want to give small tufts of feathers and things to your feel. But that's not what we're doing here today. We're doing scales, but um, it's a different story altogether. Now I've gone on to use dots to make stipple or pointillism. I'm using them to indicate smaller scales on finer scales on the mouth portion of the face. That's what I'm using here. But you can also use stipple or, or pointillism to indicate shading and gradients because you can't usually get a nice gradient with a pen, not through cross hatching or other line work. You usually have to use small dots to indicate more of a gradient shade when you're using a pen. Now, as you can see, for the remainder of the body as filler, I'm going to use a series of small round scales and large round scales, which I kind of think of as a warty type of scale, more of a wart or a bubbly type of scale, which protrudes out from the smaller scales. And these are fun to mix and match. And they fit into that cobblestone street I was talking about earlier where you have a series of small, smaller stones mixed with larger stones. And they're all round stones. And they mix together in an uneven mixture of different sizes of stone but or scale, as it were. But it gives it a nice textured range, not just your your even, you know, scale base where everything where every scale is evenly smooth. Now, please, if you are an artist and you are trying to do scale work on your own, whether it's your first time or not, please be patient with the scales. They do take time. Don't rush it because you'll get sloppy scale work. You know, you'll your scales will be erratic and they won't look the same and they won't you look as uniform as you want them to. But don't be frustrated. You know, it's almost like a meditative state if when you get into it. You just have to keep on doing the same repetitive pattern over and over, you know, otherwise you'll get really uneven scales. Sometimes you might be, that, that might be what you're looking for, but, you know, to give a nice even body of scales to a snake or to a dragon that you want to have a nice smooth scale, fish scale looking texture to, it takes time and it takes patience. It might take several minutes to a half hour to properly scale not descale, but to properly scale a picture of a, of a fish or a dragon or something. But just have fun with it. Don't don't give up and don't don't scratch through because you get frustrated. Just just take your time. It might take some time. And again, like I said earlier, this is where I'm using pencil and pen to give it a multi gradient effect on the shading, not just pen, but also some graphite thrown in there for extra, an extra flare of of, uh, of shading, where pencil and pen just they just can't do it without the other. And you can see here where I'm using some larger bubbly scales and some larger round scales to denote that it's a 
Yeah, the picture is coming closer to you. So the scales are going to be larger on the shoulder and the uh, the warty scales are going to be larger on the shoulder as well because they are closer to you as perspective art would dictate that it would be closer and they would be also larger. Well, as always, I hope that you like my videos. I hope that you look forward to watching another video as I enjoy making them for you. Please like and subscribe and share and make sure you hit that little alert button, which if you do that, you won't have to search for me because every time I make a new video, you'll get the alerts that I'm having a new video out. So do yourself a favor, like and subscribe, and uh, it doesn't take much. A little click here and a little click there, it's free. It doesn't cost you a dime and it helps me out a lot you know it really does it helps my youtube channel grow and if you're an artist even if you're not an artist you can still like my videos you can still enjoy content on the video you can enjoy a cooking video without being a chef you can enjoy an art video without being an artist i know i've enjoyed plenty of videos about car maintenance and other things without actually being a mechanic so share with all your friends that's what all the YouTubers want anyway. Just share and be shared alike. So, hope to see you next time.